Сън на Света Славля. Святослав's Dream, an extract from the tale of Igor's campaign. Well, this is a small extract from the tale of Igor's campaign, a poem written in the 12th century. The poetic text has been reconstructed by Mr. Sergei Nikolaev in 2015 with the ancient pronunciation, accents and poetic meter. The tale of Igor's campaign is a poem written by an anonymous poet in the 12th century. It was written in Old East Slavic. And a little bit about the background, historical background. Prince Igor, he was son of Sviatoslav, and he ruled over Novgorod Siversk, which was part of the Chernigov Principality of Ancient Rus, which is, of course, now is Ukraine. In 1185, Igor waged a military campaign against the tribe of Pol Polovtsians, also known as Cumans. Unfortunately, the campaign failed and uh, Igor's regiment was defeated and he had to return to his um, native principality. Now, Igor's father, Prince Sviatoslav, ruling in Kiev, in his palace on the hills, had an ominous dream about his son Igor. And this extract is Sviatoslav's ominous dream, expressed in only 21 lines. Now you will see the old East Slavic text on the left, then the 12th century pronunciation on the right. Then I also give you the English translation of it. And after that, I provide several comments on some interesting things in this extract. They prove that it was most probably based on even older pagan, heathen texts and beliefs. So make sure that you watch this video to the end. All right, let's start. А Святославу мутен сон увиде в Києві на горах. Сіно часу вечора одівахуть мерече чорною пополомою на кровати тісові. Святослав had a troubled dream in Kiev on the hills. This night from eventide they were dressing me, he said, in a black shroud upon a bed of yew. Черпа хоть місіньє віно, сутрудомі смішено. Сипа хоть мітощі мітули, погане хотолковіно. Велика є жанчугу на луно, і нігую тимя. Уже дески безкнесе, в моєме терімі, златоверсіме. They were ladling out for me dark wine mixed with sorrow and pouring large pearls into my lap from thin quivers of the pagan Tolkovini. They are attending to me. Already the beams have no girder in my gold-roofed palace. Весю ночі со вечера бусові врані во зграяху уплес неска на болоні беша, де брезки сані із несошася all night from eventide, Bus's ravens were croaking on the meadow by the town of Pliesnesk. Thicket snakes, like a funeral sleigh, rushed towards the blue sea. And now a few comments on some expressions. Sine je vino su trudomi smešeno. Dark wine mixed with sorrow. What does this mean? The old East Slavic word trudo means sorrow or grief or mourning. So it's the wine mixed 
with grief. Another interpretation is that it means a potion that was added to blue wine, which is the funeral wine. In this case, the word comes from the Proto-Slavic meaning of a mushroom that grows on the tree. According to the medieval chronicle, Tolkovini is another name of the pagan Tolkovini tribe. Since at the time of writing of this text in the 12th century, the Tivertsi or Tolkovini tribe no longer existed, according to archaeological data in particular, it is assumed that this dream is a processed ancient folklore text in which the name of Sviatoslav replaced some other more ancient character. And this is also evidenced by the archaic language of this extract. Deski besknese. The beams have no girder on the roof. What is the girder? What kind of beams are these? The roof beams have no girder, meaning that the main beam to which all other roof boards were fastened is no longer there. Most likely it is a pagan belief that existed among all Slavic people. In order to facilitate the death of a person who suffered a lot before the actual death, um, they raised or removed the girder, that main beam from the roof. Why? Because they believed that this would make it easier for the soul to leave the body. This was actually most often done in the case of death of sorcerers or magicians, because they were the ones who suffered a lot before death. Busovi Vrani Buses, ravens. They remind us of Odin's ravens from Norse mythology. One of Odin's names was Hrafnagud, where Hrafn is the raven and Gud is God, so the god of ravens. Dybriski Sani Thicket snakes or, or a sleigh. The word Dibr in East Slavic dialects meant a deep ravine with thick forest. For ancient people, this is a typical otherworldly place inhabited by demons. Therefore, the word Sani here can mean mythological snakes or dragons because they are also underworld characters associated with darkness and death. At the same time, Sani also means a sleigh, in particular a funeral sleigh. So this means that Sviatoslav dreamed of Bus's ravens as ominous animals, ominous birds, that foretell death, and otherworldly snakes or dragons, which coming out of the woods rushed to the blue sea where, of course, Igor was defeated on the battlefield. Of course, the author and the listeners also knew about the funeral rite of burial on a sleigh, so there was a double association, otherworldly dragons and a funeral sleigh. Okay, so this has been an interpretation of this extract. Unfortunately, not all meanings can be interpreted correctly because for example, it is unclear why the tribe of Tivertsi were pouring pearls on Sviatoslav's lap and some other expressions in this extract. Well, probably this image was clear to the people living in the 12th century, but now, 900 years later, we can only take a guess.